Good day to my friends along the journey in automotive appreciation. I present to you a rather special story of what led me to follow the 1990s evolution in Lincoln. Thanks for joining me today. My name is Reggie and you're watching XR Maricor. For many years of my life, I have dedicated much time celebrating the advancements in technology, especially innovations within the passenger car. Automotive enthusiast is a description that suits me proudly. Being born and raised in Detroit is an infectious combination to forever follow the big three, Ford, General Motors, and Chrysler. This passion was solidified throughout adolescence with road trips elevating the car to an official member of the family. My final childhood travels was in the 1990 Lincoln Continental. It was a rental and unlike any other vehicle we've ever traveled long distance. I've known about this Lincoln since its eighth generation debut. During those days, the only books I read were car magazines. Journalists were particularly critical of the Lincoln parting ways from tradition by becoming the first front wheel drive Continental in history. Unfortunately, before this trip, the significance of the eighth generation Continental was drowned out by critics referring to it as the Taurus Lincoln. My judgment was impartial. Heck, I didn't even have a driver's license yet. The new platform transition was controversial and the sentiments around the change hampered my reception. Of course, that's before a bond was created on the holiday road. I thoroughly enjoyed being a passenger traveling from the Midwest through the East and down South. I was a long-legged 15-year-old and pleased with how spacious the back seats were. Actually, I noticed how large the overall cabin was too. I mean, it was so much to marvel being in a car with dual airbags and the latest audio equipment. All this in one vehicle was not the norm in 1990. Now, maybe some of you hearing this may differ in opinion and will tell me a car is more than its sum of gadgets and party tricks. Possibly the real backlash from traditionalists was in 1988, a V6 was introduced as the only available power plant. Obviously, I don't have the answer because as to date, I've never been behind the wheel of a 1988 through 1994 Continental. My personal experience is incomplete and most likely I'm simply romanticizing about my adolescence. Whichever the case, all these years later, I'm intrigued by the 8th generation Continental. My impression of the 1990 Lincoln Continental is so memorable that I decided to detail several changes throughout the entire 8th generation. Going forward, I will refer to this series as FN9. The Ford FN9 platform allowed Lincoln to exercise their most daring maneuvers during what looks to have been the peak of mid-sized luxury sedans. Within seven model years, the FN9 Lincoln sold 328,000 vehicles. Ford Motor Company needed the Lincoln division to adapt to the changing auto industry. The era of tail-happy rear-wheel drive cars were fleeting. In the 1990s, front-wheel drive with transverse mounted engines were widely accepted as the preferred layout. The weight directly over the drive wheels aided in road traction during inclement weather. This combination and engineering innovations at the time allowed unibody chassis to be optimized, which transformed the mid-sized car to suddenly feature interior space as large as full-size vehicles. 1988 Introduction Appearance The interior has all the traditional wood trimmings and chrome accents you would expect in an American luxury sedan. The standard upholstery features leather that is color matched to the cabin. Velour seats are optional. Lincoln continues to infuse technology throughout the instrumentation. Newly introduced ergonomic switches are placed in easy reach to improve driver focus. The debut interior is exclusive only to the 1988 model. The exterior styling has a completely new design language for Lincoln. It is a blend of European influence and a tasteful amount of domestic ornamentation bright work. The body has flowing lines and sleek window frames, allowing the wind to slip over the greenhouse effortlessly. 140 horsepower, 215 pound-feet of torque at 2200 RPMs. It is a 3.8 liter SX V6 four-speed automatic overdrive transaxle. 1989 revamped interior. The original FN9 steering wheel, 
dashboard, door cards, door pulls were all swapped for completely new design equipment. What's even more remarkable, in 1989, Lincoln was the first in the domestic market to offer dual airbags and a sedan. The exterior is a carryover from the prior year. 1990 exterior changes. From the front to the back, the Continental sports a bolder Lincoln badge and shiny new taillights. The grille is completely new with thicker bars and a relocation of the brand label. More chrome was added to the rear end, underlining the bright, rich red brake lights. The interior for 1990 was virtually unchanged, with the exception of chrome removal of the dashboard's ledge. 1991 Modernizing The interior went through a wood reduction following an industry change to sport luxury. The most obvious switch is the dashboard ledge to color match the cabin. Even the chrome trim around the radio and lower blower vent was removed. Other decorative appointments were also subtly reduced throughout the cockpit. The V6 engine received a 15 horsepower increase, 220 pound-feet of torque at 2200 RPM. 1992 consistency, no notable changes. 1993 Sport Luxury, available in the Executive Series, is an optional five-seat layout with center console and floor gear selector. This configuration bridged the gap, making the FN9 interior on par with the competition. The sedan industry-wide emerged with a new identity. Lincoln continued this transition and further decontented the Continental, away from traditional luxury cues. The V6 engine received a 5 horsepower increase, 225 pound-feet of torque at 3,000 RPM. 1994 Smoother Skin the final year of the original FN9 Lincoln was clearly a shift to a minimalist appearance. The morphing between traditional American flair and the focus on European sport luxury came to full form. For the second time, the FN9 Lincoln made significant changes, but surprisingly several updates ahead of the next generation. You will discover a newly designed executive series steering wheel, less interior wood throughout the cabin, new grille, new tail lights, new wheels, chromeless wheel well arches, body color lower rocker panels, and remodeled bumper covers with a single insert chrome strip. Bonus fun facts. Development for the FN9 Lincoln started in the fourth quarter of 1981. That's during the same time as the introduction of the seventh generation 1982 to 1987 Fox Body Continental. The FN9 Lincoln's overall length is 4 inches greater than the previous generation and 170 pounds lighter. Jack Telnack is the designer of the FN9 Lincoln. The 1988 interior is the largest of any front wheel drive vehicle at the time and has a 3 inch longer wheelbase than the Taurus. Lincoln brand to achieve back to back record total sales in 1989 and 1990. Closing thoughts. The 8th generation Lincoln Continental was so successful that the mass appeal normalized its luxury status. This saturation into the high-end market made the Continental less exclusive and plummeted the resale value. To add insult to injury, frequent and widespread failure of the adaptive air ride suspension and blown head gaskets were the one-two punch for the original FN9 generation. Today these cars are virtually wiped off the face of the earth. If mechanical problems didn't do them in, the Cash for Clunkers program surely sent them to their final destination. Having brochures is like preserving an official piece of history.